Welcome to part three of our introduction to basic HPC. We're already very comfortable with basic Linux. We understand the acceptable use policy and we've logged into the cluster. Additionally, we've learned about storage options on Henry 2 and how to transfer files back and forth from Henry 2 to our local machines. In this tutorial, we are using R as the sample application and HPC has provided a sample source file called weather.r. Now that we have our source code ready, how do we run the application? Remember, when you log into the cluster, you use SSH. After logging in, you'll be on a login node. You can't run applications on the login node. You have to run the applications on the compute node, and to do that, you need to use LSF. LSF stands for Load Sharing Facility, and that is a specific job scheduling software. A job scheduler does just that. It schedules jobs. Your job consists of the program you want to run and information on what kind of hardware or software that you want to use to run it. LSF is kind of like a waiter. First, it takes your order. Then the order goes to the kitchen where the chefs have everything pretty well organized. There's a kitchen crew and they are cooking for the whole restaurant. Your order can be very simple, something directly from the menu. Or you could give your waiter a long list of substitutes and food allergies. But this time around, we'll try to keep the order as standard as possible. This basic LSF batch script is all you need to start running applications. Much of this template can be used as is. You'll need to modify the highlighted items and we'll go over these now. N is the number of cores required by the application. For this next exercise, we're gonna keep it very simple. Choose one core. W stands for wall clock time. It should be set to the maximum time your code might take to run. Here, we chose 10 minutes. If the code takes more than 10 minutes, the job will be killed by LSF. In the next two lines, you will set the environment for your application and you will run that application. In this tutorial, we will show you how to run an R script, but you can just as easily try a MATLAB or a Python script here instead. How do we set the environment? Before trying to run anything, let's go back to Henry 2 and revisit environment variables. Here we are back on Henry 2. Type echo home. Home is the environment variable that is defined as your home directory. If you just logged in and type pwd, you should be in your home directory. pwd is an application. It's an executable. It's a program that prints the working directory. R is our application, but if we type it, it says command not found. Most of the applications that users run on Henry 2 are not defined. The commands will not be found. When you use these applications, you have to set the environment. The preferred method of setting the environment is module load. So I'm going to module load R. And then if I type R, it knows where R is. To find the available modules on Henry 2, type module avail for available. To find the modules you've loaded during the session, type module list. And if you don't want those in your environment anymore, do module purge. Once we do module purge, it can no longer find R. So why can it sometimes find R and sometimes not? That has to do with another environment variable called the path. The path is a list of file paths where the computer looks for executables. If you type in something, it will go through all of these paths and see if there exists something, and there doesn't. But PWD, it does find something. So if we type which PWD, it gives the full path. This is the full path. This is the executable. 
user bin must be in our path and it's right there. Okay, there's no R. If we type which R, command not found. So what happens when we do module load R and type which R? This is the path to the R executable. If it knows where the R executable is now, it must have changed my path. So let's do echo path, and here it is. The module load command adds the path to the executable. In this exercise, you'll submit your first batch job. Remember, always run from the scratch directory. Copy your code from the home directory to the scratch directory. Create a batch script that will run weather.r. You should run on one core and run for 10 minutes. Look at the output. The code should output a PDF file called weather.pdf. The LSF error file should be empty and the LSF output file should contain some temperatures and some indication that LSF ran properly. If you did get an error, modify the script and resubmit. Please pause the video now to complete the exercise. Let's go ahead and submit our R job. I'm in the home directory, but I need to run from the scratch directory. cd slash share slash group slash user and we'll copy the, the guide directory home user guide copy it here ls minus lrt reverse time order that shows me the last thing that was modified was the guide cd into guide and there is weather.r i'm going to clear the screen we need to make a batch submission script so to create a file you use nano submit.csh and let's look for a sample batch script. Go to the HPC website, click resources, software packages, and scroll down to see if they have example R files and they do. Scroll down to batch scripts. There's the batch script. I'm going to copy it and paste it in here. You need to look at the file before you run it, not just cut and paste. So this first line is fine. The instruction says that we should run it for 10 minutes. W is for the wall clock. We need 10 minutes, one core. Use exclusive if memory intensive. This is not memory intensive. I'm going to comment that out. I don't need to use exclusive. Output and the error files are fine. Load R, R script my program. So this runs myprogram.r, but we don't want to do that. We want to run weather.r. So now this looks good. I'm going to control X, Y, and enter to save. Let's go and submit it. One more time, check the website to see how the job can be submitted. Here it is. I'm going to copy that. And let's paste it, and enter. Type B jobs to see if your job was submitted. My job is in the pending state. If I type B jobs again, it's finished. Type LS minus LRT, that shows reverse time order. We have three new files. The error file is empty. There's a PDF file and an output file. Let's look at the output file, less, out dot two two and I'm going to tab complete. It has the temperatures, it has the LSF information, and it appears to successfully completed. Type Q for quit. The last step is to check that weather.pdf is a valid PDF file. So type file weather.pdf file tells you what kind of file it is, and it recognizes that it is a valid PDF document. Looks like we did it. After waiting in the queue for hours for your job to run, 
it crashes because of a typo. Running applications on a login node, even for only a couple seconds to test a script is prohibited. For this type of problem, you can reserve a short debugging session on a compute node in interactive mode. To run R interactively from a compute node, open a terminal on your local desktop so that you can look at weather.r. Back on Henry 2, request an interactive session on a compute node. Request one core and 10 minutes time. Make sure you are not on a login node and check the name of your node. Rename the previous PDF output file and start R. Paste the contents of weather.r at the R prompt and then exit R. After making sure a new PDF was created, exit the interactive session. Before moving on, check out how many cores there were on the compute node compared to how many there are on the login node. Please pause the video to complete this exercise. Here I am back on Henry 2. I am where I left off from the previous exercise. That means I'm in the scratch directory, in the guide directory, and if I do ls, I see the source code, the batch submission script, the output PDF, and the error in out from LSF. On my local machine, I am in the HPC demo folder, and here is weather.r. And the contents of weather.r are right here. Go back to Henry 2 and I'm going to request an interactive session on a compute node with B sub minus IS. One core is minus N1. Wall clock time of 10 minutes and a shell TCSH. And I've requested the session and now I'm on a compute node. So the name of my compute node, let's do echo hostname. If I echo hostname, I find the name of my node n2c1-9. To rename weather.r, we're just going to move it. Move it to weather underscore batch.pdf. It's the PDF we made when we were working in batch mode. ls minus lrt, there is weather underscore batch. Let's start r. Oh, R command not found. What do we have to do? Module load R. So now we can open R. There is R and we're going to copy and paste the contents of the source code. This is the, this will be the same as typing it in. So copy, paste, and there it went. To exit R, you type Q, paren, paren. Don't save the workspace. And there we are. Do ls minus lrt, and the PDF was created. This is the uh, one that we saved. They have the same sizes. And if we do file weather.pdf, it is a valid PDF. To exit the interactive session, type exit. Now, this was our node name, so I'm going to copy it. And LS hosts, let me open this so and show you LS hosts. It shows the name of every node on the cluster, LS hosts. And there we go. These are all names of nodes. Let's find the one that we used. So LS hosts, rep, and I'm going to paste the node name. And the question was, how many cores are on this node? Here's the name of this node. It's running Linux. This is the model number, and that's the number of cores on the node. Now we're on login 03. Now that's a node. So what if we do ls hosts grep login 03? This login node has 16 cores. For more information about running jobs on the HPC, click resources and software packages. Scroll down to the software package you're using. 
Once you have a sample batch script, check the documentation on running jobs to customize the batch script. This page shows several examples and use cases. Scroll up again and click the generic template for batch scripts. This generic template contains a dictionary of the LSF options. Click on the option for more information. If you need further assistance, click support and contact us. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next section.